Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel, and I just want to bring you up to date right now with the current state of development with the two electronic circuits that I describe how to build at alt-nrg.org. Uh, first we have the pulse width modulator circuit and we also have the dual output electronic fuel injection enhancer or EFIE for short. I absolutely must stress that both of these devices are still very much works in progress. Uh, there are some people selling devices already on eBay that uh, are based on my designs and based on my parts layout. So if you buy one of those, um, I, I will answer questions as best I can, but I really can't give you definitive answers on someone else's work. Here, here are the changes so far in the in the pulse width modulator based on just my experiments last night. A, the value of R12 has now been cut in half. Instead of 0 0.003 ohms, it is 0 0.0015 ohms. I've taken the 16 gauge speaker wire and cut it to a total length of two and a quarter inches and resoldered the tip together and <clears throat> this gets me uh, the ability to go from a maximum of 20 amps that it was putting out last night when I started to 40 amps uh, RMS which is pretty much all I would like to see out of this device. If I was going to go any higher I would probably put a second MOSFET right here and then I could shorten this even further um, and push it a little harder. The second item is heat dissipation. The power MOSFET is actually dissipating a little bit more heat than I would like and I think uh, there are a couple of reasons, but uh, let's first discuss about how we're going to get rid of that heat. The case itself, the cast aluminum case, is doing a very good job at dissipating the heat being produced by the um, power MOSFET. Or I should say, not dissipating, but at least conducting the heat away from the power MOSFET. How efficiently it dissipates the heat is another question because there's not, there's not very much surface area. So what I am going to do is the cover that goes on top of the box is going to become the bottom of the box. This side of the box is going to be a fan driven heat sink. I'm going to use a CPU fan driven cooler. What I will do is I'm going to take this screw that mounts the power MOSFET and send it right through the heat sink for the CPU cooler and sandwich everything together with some heat sink compound on the top of the box and maybe a second screw in another corner of the CPU heat sink so that uh, I get a nice thermal bond between the heat sink and the back of the case. Then the fan will blow down and out through the through the blades of the heat sink and that should be more than enough to keep this thing cool because while it wasn't generating a lot of heat very quickly the heat that it was generating was accumulating and it did get fairly fairly hot. Item 3 uh, the reason that it's getting hot is because it is unable to saturate go, go to full saturation instantaneously when it's charging the cell. The inrush current is too high and instead of being a perfect square wave there's a slope to it and when the output voltage is rising on a slope there is what's called an IR loss that's amps times resistance equals wattage and when you have an IR loss you have heat dissipation from the device that the power is passing through unavoidable so we got a little extra heat that we need to get rid of um, but I think I can mitigate the IR losses to some degree by adding a gate driver circuit in between the output of the LM324 comparator and the input to the gate of the power MOSFET so I probably am going to need to use this area of the printed circuit board that I eliminated to add that circuit for the gate driver. 
Okay, that's item three. Item four. The capacitor that is the timing capacitor, the 0 0.022 microfarad disk ceramic capacitor, has a great deal of temperature drift. And I replaced it with a 0 0.02 microfarad polystyrene capacitor, which is much more stable with temperature changes. So now, with a polystyrene capacitor in place, when I set the frequency, no matter how the temperature drifts on the unit, the frequency stays pretty much where I set it. That takes care of the pulse width modulator. Some folks have been asking about the electronic fuel injection enhancer, and I want to show you, this is my prototype, and you can see I, it just has wires coming out of the transformer that I used in my prototype because this is what I had laying around in my parts bin. The triad transformer that I spec'd out, while I know works and will work, uh, may require some design changes. Some folks have told me that they've only been able to get maybe uh, 150 millivolts at the most coming out of the secondary of the triad transformer and that's possible because it is a lower impedance device than what this is obviously so the trimmer potentiometers that I was using which are 20k may have to be adjusted you might need to use a 100k trimmer potentiometer or a 200k trimmer potentiometer I don't know but I'm I what I do know is some parts values of this device are going to change to accommodate the different transformer and I will build one I do have some triad transformers on order and when I do get them in I will I will uh, put it together and uh, check to see what the what the component values actually need to be in order to accommodate that. And we might even be able to eliminate this um, transient suppression diode on the primary coming into the triad transformer from the schematic diagram. Now some folks have asked if I would show them the back of the circuit board. I don't know what you will what they will be able to glean from seeing this what I will also do is I will take a a still snapshot and I will post this at alt-nrg.org for you to look at and hopefully you can answer your own questions from the picture that I take of this perforated board wiring. So that's it for the update on the pulse width modulator and the electronic fuel injection enhancer. I hope everybody is uh, having great success with their with their builds and I will be back this afternoon hopefully running the VSPB cell and the EBN cell off of the modified pulse width modulator and uh, maybe even playing with the internal combustion engine again. That's all for now. Zero Fossil Fuel. Everyone take care.